Hello, welcome to the Morpho Syntax class. In this class, you need to go to the virtual campus uh, from UEP and we will be working with this until all this issue with coronavirus finishes. Okay, so welcome. And what the first thing that you need to do is you need to get into the morphosyn morphosyntaxis uh, class. I already enrolled you, or most of you, and it says welcome to Morphosyntax, and here you will find the syllabus for this subject. So let's go into that. There is a folder called materials. You will open that folder and you will find two files there. The first one is the Morpho Syntax Manual 2020. And the second file, PDF file, is the Morphosyntaxis, Programma de Morphosyntaxis Fale. Okay, so please, let's go over, uh, let's go there. And we need to go over this, uh, like, socializar el programa de estudios. <laughs> so, who's going to read it? Okay, let's keep that part. You read it on your own and you read the fundamentación, competencias, capacidades a lograr, eh, orientaciones metodológicas, evaluación de aprendizajes, and especially I need you to go over the contenidos section, okay? There you have a date for each of my classes, and you also have homework and quizzes, yeah. Mr. Quistoffel, yes, I know that. Okay, so uh, please take care of the dates because I intend to follow them to the letter. Okay, and the bibliography that you will be using for this module will be the manual, Morphosyntax manual. And of course, you will have the in, an introduction to language book by Franklin and Rodman, and finally, Study of Language by George Ewell, okay? In this very first class, we will focus specifically on Study of Language by George Ewell. Why? Because he has a specific chapter devoted to Lesson 1, which is the Word Formation chapter. As you know, morphology is the study of word formation, word shape. So, uh, the very first lesson has to do with that. How is it that words are formed? So, please open your books then, your textbook, Study of Language, and go to chapter 5, Word Formation. In this, word formation section, chapter 5, and that would be PDF file page 52. You have an introduction to what word formation is. And then you can read about the different word formation processes that there are. How is it that words are formed? Do we know them? And if we know them, can we name them technically? So, we need to use linguistic terminology to name these phenomena, okay? We're going to start with etymology. Etymology is the study of the origin of words. Origin meaning, where do these words come from? What geographical or cultural background do they have, okay? So, if you compare if you read that section from the textbook and then you compare it to the manual, please open the manual now and see the word formation processes, which is unit one. If you see the manual, you will find, wait, you will find a, an exercise. 
in this exercise, you need in A, you need to give your opinion. You're not supposed to know the answers, but you need to give your opinion. You, you can match the origins, the backgrounds for these words that are in a box with the words themselves. And then I will be giving you the answer to this. B, the exercise B is even more fun. Why? Because you will see that I provide of certain words and the words mean something nowadays. But if we look at the etymology of the word, we will see that their meaning has changed through time. That means that originally the words meant something else. If you look at number five in your manual exercise B that says gorilla, you know what gorilla means, right? It's an ape, a big ape, king of the jungle, or something like that, Tarzan's best friend. And if you look at the etymology, you will see that gorilla actually originally meant a bunch of hairy women. Yes, that's right. That's what it meant. A bunch of hairy women. So that, in that sense, the exercise is super fun and you will need a dictionary to, um, to solve the task. Okay? After you're done with this etymology exercise, the two of them, you need to do the study question number one in study of language. That will be page 61 in the textbook study of language. And you're going to have your first task for homework. Okay. What are you going to do? You're going to look at the etymology of your names. Where do your names come from? And you're going to upload your answers on the platform. Okay. Um, I will create a way in which we can all see your answers so that everyone knows what their names mean. Okay? That would be a fun exercise. Try to have fun with them. Okay? So that would be regarding the first of the different types of word formation processes. That was etymology. Remember, etymology is the first word formation process. Second one, let's continue. The second one, according to the textbook, study of language, is called coinage. Coinage has to do with using the names of products instead of the products themselves. For example, in Paraguay, it's super, super common to say um, colino or colgate. What we really mean is pasta dentífrica. So, or we say coca to mean pool or sprite, something like that. Yes. So, coinage is the phenomenon, the word for nation process that has to do with that. We're creating a new word, in a sense, a neologism uh, to, to name something that already has a name. Okay? That has to do with um, coinage. Uh, there is a variation of a coinage called eponyms. Yes, you can read that in that section, page 54 study of language. Eponyms are coinage words, but these have spe are specific. Why? Because they name, they come after uh, last names of people or places. For example, the, the Earl of Sandwich was an Earl, a person with a nobility title. And he was for the, from the island of Sandwich. Okay, so now you know the origin of the word Sandwich. Yes, the word Sandwich was named after him. Okay, why do we call it 
uh, eponym and not coinage because it was named after a person's last name. Okay, so those are the, that is the difference between coinage and eponym. If you are still not sure after you have read the, the textbook and after you heard my explanation, you can always Google it. Have fun with that. Okay. Let's go back to the manual. So we will be using it in an alternate way. Yes, textbook, manual, textbook, manual. Okay. Manual. Manual page four has coinage and eponym. Yes. And notice that it has an exercise. In the exercise, you need to look at the coinage words and you need to say what they actually refer to. For example, we say Kleenex, but actually it means facial tissue or tissue, just tissue. So what do the other words mean? After that, once you have finished, then you need to do task C from a study of language, and that will be on page 62 in your textbook. Okay, so far? Okay, if you are tired already, you need to always stop the video. Yes, I'm getting tired, so I'll stop it now. <laughs>